guys, I hope you're good. Today's topic is a heavy one. We're talking about the killers of the flower moon, the Osage murders, and the birth of the FBI by David Grann. I knew very little about this corner of American history until I read this book. So the Osage Native American tribe in the late 1800s was forcibly relocated off of their land in Kansas to this crappy, rocky piece of land in what was at the time uh, Indian Territory and later became Oklahoma. And unbeknownst at the time that they were forced to relocate there, but that crappy little piece of land, it turned out to be sitting on top of incredibly valuable oil reserves. To gain access to the oil and to be able to drill it, the, you had to pay the Osage. So the Osage ended up becoming incredibly wealthy. And this book follows events that happened in the early 1920s when the Osage were the richest people per capita in the entire world. And around this time, the Osage start dying with alarming frequency. Some of them went missing and when then they were found days later in the woods, dead with a gunshot wound. Um, a lot of them started dying from this peculiar wasting illness. It turns out that they were being slowly and systematically poisoned to death. The author, David Grand, is a writer for The New Yorker, and he wrote a best-selling nonfiction book in addition to The Killers of the Flower Moon, which is a bestseller. He also wrote The Lost City of Z, uh, which I read about a year ago, and I enjoyed that book as well. It's about an Amazonian jungle explorer named Percy Fawcett, and I found the writing styles to be really similar. So if you've read David Graham before, however you felt how you felt about that book is probably how you're going to feel about The Killers of the Flower Moon as well. My complaints and also my accolades are actually very similar for both books, so very meticulously researched. There's quite a bit of breadth to the books, so if you have a high level of interest in this topic, you'll be able to read it and come away something of an expert. You'll have a lot of context, you'll understand what was happening in history at that time. For me personally, I found myself getting a bit bogged down in the details and wishing there was more of a straightforward narrative that would be a bit easier to follow. Molly Burkhart was an Osage woman whose family in particular became the targets of this cruel conspiracy to, to kill her entire family. And I found myself wishing that the book had focused more closely on Molly's biography and just chronologically telling the story of her life. Molly Burkhardt is probably the closest thing the book has to a main character, but the book also tells the story of all the Osage murders and the entire conspiracy, and it's it's overwhelming. It's a lot to take in. It also led the book to read a bit more like a research paper than a story. At the time, the federal government mandated that a full-blooded Osage Native American had to have a white legal guardian manage their affairs for them, and that was really just a way for them to take power and money money away from the Osage tribe. And it was these legal guardians along with white men who had married into the Osage tribe. Um, they were conspiring together to basically inherit the land rights once there were no Osage left to, to inherit them. There were white men who were traveling to DC trying to petition the federal government to do away with the guardianship system to get an investigation into the murders that were happening and try to figure out what was happening and put an end to it and those men were also murdered. And it was actually one of the murders of these men who were traveling to DC to try to get a formal investigation into these murders. I found so incredibly disturbing. Um, the nature of, it, of what had happened was just so violent and terrible that I had to put the book down for a few days, skip to the next chapter, and keep going. Like it got in, it, it affected me. David Grant actually says as much about himself in an interview. He says it took him five years researching this topic to be able to write the book, and he says it really started to impact him, the, the weight of how much evil went on. I'll link the interview with him down below if you're interested. The interview also has some really great footage of the reservation in Oklahoma, and the movie rights to this book were purchased by Imperative Entertainment, and I'm really excited for it. I actually think this might make an even better film than it did a book. I think it has a lot of potential, especially if they focus just on Molly Burkhart, one of the central figures uh, surrounding the conspiracy and all the murders that were taking place. If it can really kind of hone in on her life and tell her story, I think it has a lot of potential to really stay with viewers without being too overwhelming. There is a rumor that Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro are both seriously considering taking on this project, so we'll see if they stick with it. But that's my review of The Killers of the Flower Moon. Leave your thoughts down below. Did you know about this little piece of history? I had not known about it until reading this book. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.